Are you ready, Cat's Paw? Oh, yeah. All right, here we go. Doing the countdown. Man, nobody's telling me in the chat which which player that was. I'm disappointed. I think I think the problem is that the, the guys in the chat, they're like new age or something, you know? <laughs> and they're like, who the hell's Morrow? And I'm like, dude, learn your history. You have to know your history not to make the same mistakes as the, the, the ones that were before made. You know, that kind of stuff. It's true. It's true. Man, it's pretty funny to, to, to think, though, like, there can't even be new school players, like, new age players at this, <laughs> uh, at this period of Brood War. It's pretty cool. It's pretty legit. Yeah. Now, uh, fortunately for Slayer, I think this only works if Zerg yeah. spawns on the left side, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. It doesn't work on that, on the other one. Although there is still a trick that you can actually pull, if I remember correctly. If you look at the, um... Ah, and the choke from the Zerg. If I remember correctly, what the turn can do is you start the depot to block, but you actually start it more inside the, ter the, the Zerg base. So you don't do it from the top, you do oh, it from yeah. the bottom. Okay. And, then, and then if you get attacked from the pro, basically you just cancel and you know, die from, with the SCV. Now, if they actually try to kill the depot with like, I don't know, six drones, then that's a lot of mining time lost and you play it normally. But if they don't, then you can actually wall them off. So, I kind of... Kind of work both ways. Fair enough. Fair enough. I just remembered, like, uh, you know, Protoss can do a similar cheese on this map, but it only works when the Zerg's on the left as well. Excuse me. <laughs> um, so, yeah. I even. I, I totally use that build to get C minus as well. And we actually have a gas trick here. For, uh... It wasn't it, right? Oh! Oh! Wow, I was not paying attention. You are absolutely right. Okay, gonna get some Zergings coming out. Looks like. Slayer has had enough of the shenanigans. I wonder if this is like... Okay, it doesn't make sense really to say defensive 9 pool, but do you think <laughs> he just expects to be proxy racks now? And he's just making that so he can completely destroy it? Okay, uh, one thing that I remember, uh, some, pl some players, that, especially the very good players, would uh, have not agreed on with me on this one, but one of the things that I uh, remember that Mondragon used to say was that when you play on a map that can be walled off by just one building, you usually want to go nine pool because there are like different paths that the other player can do that it always gets ahead unless you go nine pool. Now, yeah. I don't know if that's the case, but I do remember that this was a common thing on Tau Cross where you could block with like one pylon. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, and of course, the Overlord, by the way, is checking for those kinds of shenanigans. Um, Basically, on, on Heartbreak Ridge, there's so many uh, proxy locations. Like, you can proxy two barracks up here, uh, or in the middle of the map, or even inside your mm. opponent's base. You can even, like, build a barracks on the high ground. Actually, wait, can you build a barracks here? I think you can build a barracks here on the high ground, like, behind the natural, although that's less common. Uh, Protoss does that yeah. more, though, because you can build yeah, you cannons can. behind that. <clears throat> so, that's pretty funny. But on the other side, we do see this nice three SCV block, so these are aren't going to do too much. The uh, command center being built. Uh, inside the base, just gonna float that out when he has enough marines to keep that safe. And of course, uh, Slayer is not going all in or anything. He is getting his own natural hatchery. So, yeah, pretty, uh, pretty chill. Despite the nine pool start. You know what? When you were saying about these uh, kind of cheeses, I remember something that was that happened quite a lot in the like not not too long ago in the last uh, I don't know pro leagues or something like that. You can actually put a pylon on this ridge and then put a gateway inside the main. You can, yes. And that means that you cannot target the pylon at all. Yeah. And as well, you can make actually barracks under the, that, the same ridge and then float them in. Ah, that's interesting. But the thing is, if the Overlord does a normal scouting pattern though, wouldn't it see that if you did that? No, no, not if you do it. I mean, if, if the Overlord goes from the, from the uh, three o'clock and it goes to the nine o'clock, if you do it under the ridge that it's uh, closer to the Zerg's main, just under it, okay. I don't think it gets... Yeah, I'm just looking at it now. Yeah, I guess Yeah, if you build it like a little bit low, yeah, you're probably right, actually. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Nice. The, the, I mean, obviously that would be an all-in build as well, but... What I'm trying to say is that I think, no wait, it's actually not an all-in build because you could actually lift, block your own choke with something like a depot, and wait it out if, you know, if it doesn't mm. work. I mean, I've definitely seen factories floated in there before. By the way, the SV just died. Yeah. But uh, the fact that, you know, the proxy factory float into vultures in your main is pretty funny. Uh, I'm not sure if I've ever seen it with barracks, but it definitely makes sense that you could do it. In the meantime, we have a nice third hatchway here, sort of preventing any potential vulture running shenanigans. 
uh, and a Sunken as well, just to be safe. Because, um, I mean, it feels like, given the last two games, you know, in the second game, Slayer was much more confident, even going for a super defensive opening that cost him a lot of minerals with that, uh, that drone pull. Um, he definitely pulled it out, so maybe he's just more comfortable playing a standard game against, uh, against Deus here. I think so. I mean, especially because in the first game, even though uh, Deus was dominating most of the time, he had actually a lot of difficulty to close down the game. And in the second game, Slayer basically didn't allow Deus to almost move out on the map. So yeah, very. very I would. I would agree. Okay, so we do have the Spire coming down from Slayer, and so far, I mean, Deus isn't really trying to be either aggressive or too defensive, I think, because <clears throat> it's kind of a 100% standard what he's doing, right? Uh, yeah, pretty much, you know, T-Rex Academy into more barracks, um, presumably gonna get that factory as well, go for those siege tanks. Um, nothing too much to worry about here, and the good thing for him on Heartbreak Ridge, Zerk does have to move out quite a bit to get the third, and it's not an easily defensible third, like, you can't just put two Zerkers at the top, and, uh, and protect it. So, uh, he will have the opportunity, and it's pretty obvious where it's gonna be, like, this is pretty much the only location for the Zerg to take the third gas, that makes any sense. Um, I've sometimes seen Zergs take like the bottom right if they're going for some kind of weird like Lurker Rush build or something like that, but yeah. otherwise it's very obvious where it's going to be and it's very easy for the Terran obviously to pressure both the natural and the third at the same time, which is not really what the Zerg wants. The Zerg needs a bit more space so his mutas can uh, can do their thing. I, I really have to say though, I really don't like what Deus is doing because his style, what he's doing with the factory and a late uh, engineering bay, you know, we've seen a lot of players going for something like a four racks with plus one. That makes a lot of sense. You want to be aggressive on the map and something like that. But when you go for early factory, you want to go for early vessel. Unfortunately, he's sure. kind of going middle of the road for everything. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a good point, actually. I guess that's why the Korean players don't do it the same way anymore. Uh, because of that exact reason that you just said. Uh, but hold that thought. we got a lot of Marines running around the middle. They're about to get spotted by a Zergling, though. Oh! <laughs> it's on the well, high ground, so I didn't see it. That's a smart Zergling. Wow, he's even gonna live. Nope, never mind. But I think this is gonna have to be... No! He can defend it with the Mutas if he has good micro. Uh, it's gonna be tough, though. He really needs to micro this down. Uh, gonna try and grab on the Medics. Does not quite get it yet, but the third base has finished. He's gonna need some and more Zerglings. As well, so that's something that he can count on. With the Mutus and the Zoglings, I think he can actually close that and kill that army. I think this Terran army should probably stand at the choke point uh, on this ridge so the Zerglings can't get a surround on them. Um, because I don't think there's any way for them to leave anymore. Like, they're going to die, so they might as well kill as many units as they can. Oh, but they're going in here to the hatchery. They start targeting Ooh. it down. Mutus coming in the back. I don't know where the Zerglings are. The Zerglings are AFK once again. The Zerglings are AFK. The Hatchery down to blow half health. Is he going to go for it? No. He's going for the units instead. And it looks like going to get cleaned up. Oof. I mean, think about how much more damageable that, how much more damage that could have done if it was like four factory, uh, sorry, four barracks with a plus one. Yeah. I mean, that's... That, that's again this, the problem you mentioned earlier, this middle of the road build. Um, the marine attack is not particularly strong, the tech is not particularly fast. Um, I mean the main good point is he has more siege tanks than usual. Uh, yeah. So let's see if he can make use of that, but unfortunately for him he now has to play defensive with these mutas coming in the base. Let's see how good the muta micro is from Slayer, gonna grab the one turret in the uh, by the barracks here rather. A couple in the main. The uh, building placement isn't that tight. This is actually one um, negative point I would say about this is, uh, you know, if you don't build, if you like spread out the buildings like this, you have a little more ground to cover. There's a lot more space for the mutas to run, and you can't even fit turrets in these gaps, so it's much harder to actually protect everything. Whereas if you build it much more compact, like a lot of Terrans would do, you save a lot of space and you can actually protect it more easily. Yeah, but that's always a trade-off, right? If you, depending on what kind of build you're gonna go, if you go for the f uh, for a four barracks build, then usually you want to d position differently because you will have more units and you can kind of even split them around. Yeah, that's so. True. I'm assuming that depends a little bit on what the build, what build you're doing. Especially, also one of the things that's really funny is turrets 
most of the time you you think that the common sense is telling you that you want to keep them together right so that they defend each other but there are many times situations where you actually want to put them at the outskirts of your bases yeah. so when you actually have enough units to uh make mutas run away they take extra shots when they're running away and that you can get a few extra kills yeah that is very very true um although it's uh, on a map like heartbreak ridge i think that's not as common because of the fact that you have the cliffs surrounding everything, so it's high ground. But yeah, yeah. on maps like Fighting Spirit, uh, okay. uh, you're absolutely right. There are certain situations where you want to build more of a perimeter, and some where you just sort of build clumps of them in your base. Um, looks like these mutas are just chilling here for the time being. Looks like first vessel is going to come out, and they're going to try and grab it with the Scourge! The Scourge paused though! The Scourge are not actually targeting it! He could have- oh, but he might get it anyway! No, but the Scourge turns around! What?! <laughs> Oh. He had that. He had that. Yeah. yeah, I know. But that being said, Scourges are notoriously known for not understanding the commands of their overlords. So. Oh, God. Well, I mean, to be fair, they, like, don't have eyes or ears, right? Like, how do you even tell a Scourge what to do? They don't even have a face. They just have, like, a mouth. <laughs> They're like a mouth with wings. All right, we got the big attack going in. The Lurkers going in. The Lings went in a little bit too early, though, and they're all dead straight away. The Zerg army is getting slaughtered, but so is the Terrans. It's going to be close. The reinforcements coming for the Terran that are going to clean up. That actually broke it? Wow, I, I didn't think that that would break the Zerg. Really, I mean, I, that's nice. Well, it's nice for, uh, for Deus, but terrible for Slayer. More Lurkers even dying in the middle of the map. Looks like there was a nice spread here. Three Lurkers dying to just a handful of Marines on the top side as well. Really big win here for the Terran player. The third hatchery is already damaged, but I don't think he's going for that. I think he's going to start sieging down this natural. You can already siege this hatchery from outside the range, outside the cliff here. Now there is a fourth hatchery. Perhaps this greedy fourth hatch is what's costing Slayer right now. He also actually went for the hive and has a defile out finished so if he can get these defiles out he might have a, cha a chance excuse me <laughs> well i mean in a way this army is not really that big so as long as you get enough to just snipe out the tanks that's probably going to be good enough yeah oh it looks like oh i think there's a rally point problem here or something these links yeah. are suiciding I mean, uh, the problem is, at this point, really, the difference in, in supply is telling a little bit of the tail. And at the same time, until you get the filers, it's going to be really difficult to just to, to basically stall even this situation. Yep. How far? Oh, consume is almost done, though. It's on the verge of finishing. He just needs a few more seconds. Does he have enough yeah. units, though? No, <laughs> he doesn't. Even if he manages to get... Oh, okay, so a few more Zerglings coming out. Oh, but all oh, for tanks. Oh, man. Here we go. There's a Dark Swarm. He needs a Lurker. Okay, no, okay. That gets closer. Huh. I'm gonna force this turn back. Well, and the Lurker comes in, and that's what he critically needs. And there we go. Defilers solve all your problems. Sort of. Yeah, I wish that was as good in real life, you know. Oh, there we go. Nice Scourge hits. Take down the vessels. So, Deus is actually has been making a lot of headway, but Slayer is at least holding up for now. Unfortunately, I think for him, Deus is starting to push onto France, and I think that's going to be a little bit too much for him. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't actually have a Defiler up here at the third, and he hasn't actually mined out this back mineral, so he can't transfer one over, which is a little bit of a problem. He's making one now because he realizes his mistake, but that's actually quite a big mistake. He really should have mined out that back mineral earlier, I think, so he can actually transfer units, or at least built a Nidus Canal, but he has neither, and now this base is going to fall. A Lurker coming in from the back, but the Marines are just going to run straight in here. These units are going to die as soon as they pop. The Siege Tank's blocking any reinforcements. Ooh. Nice oh. control so far by Deus, actually. And the hatch refalls. The Lurkers actually somehow survived that, surprisingly, but... Uh... But there goes the third base. Now, there is actually still three gases mining for Slayer because he took that bottom right. But this is a bad situation. 50 supply I mean, the, against 88. The turret hasn't expanded again, which is something that might come later to be a problem. But I think that the first thing that those should do is the tanks that he has at the third of the Zerg, put them really close to the minerals, start scanning down and killing the gas of the Zerg. Because yeah, that, even that small move is probably going to annoy a lot. 
Yeah, that's actually a really good point there. You can do that pretty much for free, although his medics are taking free shots from these lurkers for no reason. Oh my god, he's just yeah. gonna lose all these? What? AFK I'm... medics! <laughs> oh. Well, never mind. Damn, these guys really need to learn how to protect their women. <laughs> I know, dude, the, the men all like hid behind next to the siege tank and like all the medics were in the front. Yeah. Oh god, they didn't even give them guns, just like let them sit there and heal themselves. <sighs> Pretty rude. Well, I mean war is difficult, right? <laughs> so. Yeah, just just let the women fight it for us. I think that's the best okay, solution. Okay, so there is a third done by, the, by Deus and he is floating it right now. So... Yep. That's not bad. Yep, gonna get that third base running. I mean, looks like these uh, units at the top right might get cleaned out eventually. And, I mean, at least Slayer's kind of... He's not that far behind, even though he lost the base, because it's still sort of 3-2-ish. to two -ish. And he does at least have the Nidus to the bottom right, so he will be able to defend that much more easily. And he can, you know, go and uh, retake the space at the top right once he clears out those units. And we do see some Zerglings coming down to block this, although not quite gonna be able to, I don't think. Nope. No. But, uh, yeah. And... There is Hive Tech as well, so, I mean, we have seen in the past a lot of games where turns could have even like two bases more than the Zerg, and just with very good Hive control, you know, swarms and everything else, you can actually beat the turn down. So, as long as the Zerg can keep producing, and so far he has actually a pretty big bank, so that shouldn't be a problem, he can still bring himself back. Oh, the double drop to the main. Hey, gonna go into some Scourge. Oh no! That third Scourge hit it, although it doesn't matter because there weren't two yeah. players. <laughs> I was thinking exactly like the same thing, it's like, oh, oh well, okay, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is the upgrade gonna finish? It does barely finish before you can kill this building, uh, but it looks like uh, the units might not even get the Evo Chamber anyway. It looks like going for a scan, going for Lurkers, one Lurker. Nope, gonna run back, you're gonna do some nice anti-Lurker micro. Be very annoying, pick off a couple of drones as well and probably just give up on these units. No, gonna go after some more drones. Very, very nice. Probably just uh, shift clicked on those drones there, but yeah. let's get a few of them. That's pretty good. 25 drones only? Wow, that's actually pretty low in economy for the Zerg. Indeed it is, and he's still getting blocked at the top right here, so unable to retake that base. Even though he's floating almost uh, 1,200 minerals here. There we go. A lot ah, of minerals ah. in the bank. Wait, I'm kind of surprised because last game it was a little bit of the reverse thing, right? It was Deus yeah. who had a lot of trouble, and yeah. it seems like. No? Yeah. No, go ahead. I completely agree with you, man. No, I, I just think that maybe the thing is that the, both players actually crumbled under pressure. Rather than basically <laughs> that, you know, it's not like one player is better than the other, but basically the player that was attacking, because you have the momentum, you kind of have an easier way to keep up with the, your own pace. But when you're being defensive, you start to kind of get a little bit stressed yeah. or something like that. Yeah, that's actually a really good point. That's why uh, whenever you watch like really, really high level players, uh, even when they're, you know, defending a major attack or something, they're always finding a way to counterattack, like either a storm drop, or, you know, just like sending 10 Zerglings uh, around the side to counter, something like that. Um, yeah, good players will always be looking for opportunities to do that so they can attack while defending. Yeah, and I, I remember this was kind of quite uh, important in matchups that were really simple, like ZVZ, PVZ, where you basically, if you send two more, two Zerglings of your own instead of defending to attack your opponent, then suddenly, you know, they miss out on their micro and somehow they lose everything. So. That was one of the things that, especially for things like, for example, a river drop, because you're the one dropping and your opponent is waiting to react to your move, so... Yep. Somehow we got one random lurker under a swarm here on the left side. It's killed this bunker at the third, but I don't think it's going to be able to do too much more here. The vulture is going to come down and take care of it, but a nice little bit of uh, annoyance, and it looks like they don't have vision anymore. Hey, there we go. Oh, one more. Nice. Yeah, and a lot of damage dealt as well, so... I mean, even those Vultures are gonna actually kill the, those two Lurkers. You know, that's a lot of Vultures to lose for just two Lurkers. Indeed, indeed. Um, I, and they were all clumped perfectly for those uh, Spines as well. I'm actually wondering, uh, Deus doesn't know about this bottom right base, does he? Like this, No. even though there's a Nidus here, he could quite easily have made an attack over here 
And yet, he's just like slowly trying to cover this mineral only instead. Although to be fair, he actually doesn't have as many units as I expected, so I guess just being a bit careful. He's got triple armories, by the way, the good old triple armory build. It's very nice, it's very, very go-to. <laughs> Um, and I guess he also has to be slightly careful that there's no drops in his base. Of course, Hyperic Bridge notorious for being annoying to defend uh, drops in your main. Wow, there's actually Hydra upgrades coming as well. Actually, no, that makes sense because of the, uh, the mech switch. And a few more units can get picked off here at the front by these lurkers. Yeah, but although the main problem I think for Slayer right now is that he has a little bit of a tunnel vision problem. He's just trying to push through one area. He's not at the same time expanding. He's not trying to like send a few zerglings around the other way. Ah, plague! Uh, only four, four vessels though. <laughs> oh no, five, five, five. No, he had six, and one of them died. Really? Yeah, oh, that was oh, good. Okay. So, yeah, that's really good actually. But he's still getting irradiated to pieces. <laughs> vessels. Oh, okay. There are the Zerglings that I was wondering about, although just a few of them, not probably gonna do too much. Yeah, it looks like Slayer retaking the top right base now, so going back up to four, but the Terran's already got the Mineral Only, and as you mentioned, I believe, in the last game, uh, you know, if the Terran's going bio, the Mineral Only provides just as much as a gas base anyway. Um, although it's basically sort of a half bio, half mech here from our Terran player. Very interesting style here from Deus, uh, but it's working out for him, I guess. I, I mean, it's... He, he's quite ahead right now, so... I mean, against mech you actually need to have uh, overwhelming supply to beat it efficiently, so... Ooh, okay. <laughs> oh! Nice play, but a, a little bit too late, I think. Yep, tries to grab a couple of those vessels with a Hydra at the last second. Does grab two of them, which is nice, but a bit of a scattered attack there. Lurkers on one side, Hydra's a little bit behind on the other, and... There weren't any Dark Swarms, I don't think, uh, which was the biggest problem there. If he swarmed those Lurkers, that fight could have been a lot different. But, gonna send a few Hydras down here to the 6 o'clock, just gonna be annoying. The Terran army is just sort of chilling here and not doing anything. Yeah. And it's a very small army, and I think that actually tells uh, Deus that there is a base at the bottom right. Oh, that's actually a good point, yeah. Just accident might have accidentally just revealed that. Uh, let's see if Deus actually figures this out. I mean, again, there is a Nidus Canal there. There is an Ultra's Captain Morving there. If he runs over there now and kills that, that could be quite uh, a nice delay on that Ultra's Tech. And here he goes. He's running down there. A lot of money banked for him, by the way. But there we go. Oh, one more vessel. Presumably a Plague Vessel getting picked off. A lot of uh, money in the bank for Slayer as well, though. Yeah, but unfortunately not too much gas. So even that, uh, he, he won't be able to get like the, the armor for the Ultra's and some Ultra's. Oh, looks like units coming out of the Nidus. Is it going to be enough? There's the Dark Swarm, the Lurkers. Only one Lurker makes it under the Dark Swarm. Is it going to be enough? There's the Dark Swarm, but the Nidus Canal is getting targeted. It does get taken down, and that's a huge problem for the Zerg player. He only has one Lurker doing damage, but it looks like it might actually be enough here. The Marines just cannot deal with it. No, there's actually a second <laughs> Lurker in the back. Wow. Clutch defense. Ooh. I mean, that's actually pretty huge because the amount of army that Deus lost is not that big. But the fact that the Ultra Cavern lives and that you can start actually building uh, the Ultra Cavern, I think that's actually pretty big because you don't need uh, like 20 Ultras to be efficient. If you just have a few of them and send a ton of Zogans with them. Yeah, that's true. You just need them to tank the hits in the beginning. And as long as you tank long enough for the Zerglings to get into melee range, the, the Zerglings just tear everything to pieces. Um, he just has to be a little bit careful of spider mines. Actually, Deus has been really good about placing lots of mines on the map. He was the same way in the first game as well, actually. And Ultra Ling uh, does need to be a bit careful about that, because obviously you have so many units clumping up that they take a lot of damage. So you need some Hydras to run around and clearing the area first before you can actually move on the map. And that being said, it's only on the bottom side. So through the top, maybe. Yeah, that's very true. But I'm pretty sure that uh, at this moment, Slayer doesn't really know about this because he's been sending most of his army through the bottom, so... Yeah, I mean, I guess it's because he also wants to try and keep the pressure off of this expansion as well, so he's sort of attacking the army from the top side. Um, but as you say, there's pretty much an open path to the natural along the top, uh, top side of the map there. Um, it's basically just a free attack route, so definitely, I mean, he could have at least sent a few units to scout that out. In the meantime, though, he is taking the top left base, uh, which is pretty good. Oh, we got army moving oh, in again. 
Oh, okay, deflected again. And pretty efficiently as well, so. And with a good old BM plague at the end, just to see off those units. Say screw yeah, you guys. Kind of, that, that kind of makes you feel like, for example, somebody is like already on the floor and you, you, you kick them again. So that's kind of like the same move, right? Yeah, pretty much. You know, it's like teabagging someone in Halo or something. <laughs> <laughs> just like plaguing the last unit as it leaves. All right. Uh, is those actually like... I don't know what those is actually doing because he's losing a lot of units in many areas. He's not really... I don't know, defending? I don't know. It's weird because it seems like for the last two minutes the Slayer has been able to deflect the attacks and at the same time try to slowly push, start killing units. Yeah, I don't actually know where all the supply is for the Terran. Does he just have like a hundred supply of SCVs or something? Because he's no, not 142, he... but there's like no army anywhere. He has 44 marines and 9 vultures, <laughs> 2 dropships, 6 science vessels, so his army is pretty well rounded. I don't think he has it uh, like together. Seems like he has small packs of units uh, trying to do something, but he's not attacking, trying to harass or anything like that. Yeah, and that's actually letting Slayer uh, pull this game back, because he was actually behind after losing that third, but um, another thing to think about though is that on this two-player map, it's very easy to split the map and it's very easy for Zerg to basically get uh, grounds down in the late game. Kind of like what we saw in the first game of the day where the Protoss just like outlasted the Zerg. Um, yeah. But in this case though, Slayer has actually already taken both corner bases. So at least he's avoiding the split map situation for now. But the question is whether he can hold on to both of these bases. It looks like the Ultralisks are out on the map. The cows are out. They don't have their armor bonus yet. Just the speed, let me see the armor. Actually, no, it's not even upgrading. Um, oh, and everything's gonna get irradiated. Because God bless science vessels. <laughs> I think that the main problem right now is that because of those being so, so kind of like defensive, not doing anything, the Zerg is uh, choosing his battles smartly enough to be efficient and at the same time taking more bases. So the longer this goes on, even though the turn is really up in supply, the longer this goes on, it might go worse for Deus. You know, I wonder, there's like so many marines shooting this Dark Swarm. Like, Dark Swarm blocks bullets because it's like a bunch of bugs, right? You're basically shooting into like a cloud of bugs. There must be like so many blood uh, bug guts just like flying everywhere onto these lurkers. It must be pretty disgusting. Uh, uh, I mean, if you, if you think about the fact that Zergs basically have creep, I don't think that that would be the biggest problem for them, you know, having some bugs around. Okay, that's fair enough. <laughs> Alright, you got me there, man. You got me there. There's still no nice that... in this base, by the way. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, uh, Deus lost so many units trying to push into it <laughs> that I don't know if he wants to try again. That's true, but at the same time, Slayer's not making much headway, but I guess I guess in this situation, Deus is the one that needs to kill one of these bases, otherwise they're just gonna keep free mining from the two corner bases. Yeah, the top uh, the top left actually. Yep. Oh whoa, huge drop here. You're right. Hello. Alright, so never mind, I guess that base is gone. Um, but that still leaves the Zerg up a base over the Terran because he has the mineral only as well. <sighs> nice little drop in action. I'm just trying to figure out because I think that both players at this point are a little bit frustrated about what's going on. I, I mean, it does seem like both players are relatively defensive, trying to make very small attacks instead of like choosing the entire army and trying to push for the kill. And usually I think that works a little bit better for the Zerg because of the swarm, but... Yeah. I mean, there's still a huge supply lead and actually Slayer is starting to really drop down, so... I think right now they're both just angry that Tupacalypse chose this map. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, as you say, it uh, looks like Terran player is taking an advantage. Kill the top left base. I'm actually going to kill this 12 o'clock base as well, yeah. this mineral only base. So uh, definitely putting Slayer behind here. Although, he's mined out his main as natural. So Deus now only mining from his third, which is actually getting dangerously low. And the mineral only, <laughs> which doesn't have that many minerals to begin with. And some Zerglings just run through the middle of the map, you know, there was just a, a command center building there and they were like, no, 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 we want to go and, and die to some Marines. We don't want to kill that. <laughs> oh man, but he's down to less than half the supply of uh, 
of Deus right here, so he's got to do something. That's an interesting command center from uh, from Deus. I guess he figures he, he's it's not easy to take those corner expansions, but it's also not easy to take this base. I don't think that was even cancelled. I don't think he realized that was actually under attack. It just fell so fast. I think this is going to be lights out really soon for Slayers, because the main problem that I have is he only has one Defiler, and it's at the bottom. So through the top, that small Medic Marine army can actually try to push and kill the third. And once that one falls, that will be a one, pretty much one base mining for the Zerg, so... It's very true, although it looks like we have a big commitment here at the 12 o'clock to try and retake this. While the Zerg is coming out, and gonna go in here. Note that the Marines are much better upgraded, they're 3-2, yeah. like it's just 2-1 uh, of the Zerglings, so that's not ideal. But they are gonna clean up, and he is gonna retake these expansions. Meanwhile though, the Terran... Gonna go in with a lot of sea shanks. These are three, two upgraded sea shanks as well. Really, what? really nice. Oh my god, that's actually. <laughs> well, I guess if the game lasts thirty minutes and you've been trading all this time, you and you have three armories as you mentioned, <laughs> you actually can get good upgrades for your tanks. It's the triple armory build, guys. It's legit. Oh man, I think I think Slayer is gonna finally lose this base, and that might be the end of him. I mean, he's basically double expanding to the top, but uh, other than that, he's got very few options here. Only 60 supply worth of units, pretty much just Zerglings at this point, and look at all these Sea Shanks go. This might be the last Desperation backstab with his Zerglings before he has to type out of the game here. And they're even gonna get blown up by uh, by some Spider Mines. Oh, where's he gonna go? Okay, he's gonna go for the bottom left. Alright, that is a... Uh, to be fair, an open expansion, but he's going to lose this one in exchange. And obviously that command center can just lift. <laughs> yeah, I mean, at this point it's pretty much... I'm, I don't really know what Slayer could even try to do, because not only he has like very low supply, he doesn't have any bank, and at this point, even trying to move through the map, you're going it's, to eat some uh, mines, so... That's, I think, why you need actually a huge overwhelming supply when you're Zerg playing against Mech, because... The efficiency is not only that, the fact that the you know tanks are very efficient, the, also the problem is that you would have to control a huge army perfectly not to eat anything like spider mines. Yeah, yeah, that's absolutely true. It's just like really annoying to deal with all around. Um, yeah, I think this game is in the bag now. The command center floating down to the bottom right. You know, Deus not going to mess around, going to make sure he has that stable income while he goes for the attack. Just a handful <laughs> of units going to the top left, probably going to be enough even. Uh, yeah, I'm, it's it's going to be enough, but uh, the funny thing is that the base that actually Deus is taking right now, it has like, I don't know, 1,200 minerals <laughs> left. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh, random plague on this top left army. Doesn't really matter. Command center finally... Waiting for the creep to dissipate at the bottom right. And I mean, just basically waiting for the uh, the GG from our Zerg player here. Not much left he can do, but of course doesn't want to give up yet because uh, this is the deciding game in this best of three. I mean, Slayer is a fighter. We have to give him that. <laughs> because he has that 56 supply against 181 and he's still fighting. <laughs> yeah, the good old fantasy GG timing. He's doing it wrong though, he needs to be Terran for that. No. Although you, you technically you could be not Terran, you just, you know, call it the DG timing and that's it. It's not the same, it's not but the same man. There's no, no I know, I you know. You need the atmosphere, you need the prestige of the you fantasy need the, DG timing. You, you need to have the last two SCVs trying to repair your command center for exactly. that, man. <laughs> exactly. Oh wait, he's gonna erase his own drones with his defiler. Look, oh twelve o'clock, eraser. Hey the self eraser, I love it. But Still. It's close. Oh, looks like we have a major drop though. And the drop in the main seals it. Sorry guys, if you look on the mini map, there's like units there. <laughs> the quad drop in the main to seal the deal. And that will be game, of course, in I mean, favor of Deus. I mean, that will do it. <laughs> it will. That will. Deus is like, alright, let's end this. Sweet. So.